when the spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th.
Welcome back to Today at Keeneland. Scott and Gabby with you, and thank you for joining us for 30 minutes of your morning as we get you set up for this Wednesday of racing at Keeneland Racecourse. If you haven't looked outside or you're not here with us in Lexington, it rained quite a bit mm -hmm. over the last day or so. So off-track conditions on the main track, which we'll get to in a moment, and no turf racing today, and a lot of scratches and changes. Lots of scratches and changes, but the good news is the sun is peeking through the clouds, right? Glass half full. And these types of days I find very challenging, but very lucrative sometimes. It's always challenging. It's the yeah. challenge that brings us back. It's a different type of challenge. Because we handicapped this card like five days ago, maybe more than that, like eight days ago. <laughs> Whenever it was drawn. done it eight days ago because they drew it seven days ago. Seven so stop, days again, ago. stop making things I like up. to exaggerate. It's Wednesday. It means it is the Wednesday challenge presented by Malone's. Make sure you get involved in this. Uh, patrons can enter the contest for $10 at Wagering Central uh, near the track, just directly uh, adjacent really to the finish line here at Keeneland Racecourse under the grandstand. And you place a, the way you enter, it's a $10 uh, entry fee. You get to place a ten uh, $2 win place mythical wager uh, for the final Final six races of the day, 100% of the pool is paid out to the top 10 players, and that is presented by Malone. So Wednesday challenge today here at Keeneland. Winner, winner. Malone's dinner. You're not the best color man in the business for nothing, folks. So let's take a look <laughs> back to Sunday at the racing we had. Three days kicked off this spring meet. We've got five races this week, starting today in Run for the Hills, race number five, Cassie Jose Ortiz. She handled the grass coming up from Florida. That was one of the concerns that Mark Cassie had. Sometimes they said that they take to it. Sometimes they don't. She clearly did. And Sid Amara, a very nice winner for Judd Mart, Bill Mott, and Jose Ortiz, who's having a heck of a meet here at Keeneland. Yeah, he is. He won three in one day last week. Uh, Sid Amara, very, very beautiful filly. You can just see the size and scope that she has. Fandom came back in winning ways. Of course, he was very impressive, breaking his maiden as a two-year-old here at Keeneland last spring. And he comes back off of the lengthy layoff since Royal Ascot to get this W. And uh, Wesley saying, oh, yeah, we'd like to go back to Royal Ascot with him. But who he, knows? He, he's very good over at Royal Ascot. Denim and Pearls was very, very impressive. She dashed away from this group. Philly that we'd seen break her maiden here last year at Keeneland. And the big winter circle celebration. She absolutely toyed with that group. Group. And Brad Cox, one of his two wins this meet so far. Wesley Ward, Chad Brown tied with three. Bill Mott, Brad Cox, Todd Pletcher with two. Gaff Leon, one clear of the Ortiz brothers. Irad and Ho Jose, Luis Saez with three. Florent Giroux, I was looking at the jockey standings. He's only ridden a handful of horses, mm -hmm. and he's got two wins, so he's making the most of his opportunities this spring. Absolutely, and uh, I just goes to show you the depth of this riding colony. I mean, I know riders kind of go in and out throughout this meet. Sometimes they go back to New York or whatever, but man, is it tough. And those top five riders are just really bringing their A game this meet. It's the best of the best in the game each and every season here at Keeneland. Let's go to WKYT for the latest on this wet Wednesday weather. Here we are, the first Wednesday of the racing season here for this spring meet out of Keeneland. And we're going to get some typical... April showers out there. Not as cool as we featured when we got things going last week, but we're going to be in the 60s. You're going to have some rain around and toward the afternoon and evening hours. I think what could happen for the second half of the meet, I think we could run into more thunderstorm activity for us. So a lot of folks heading out there around 11 and then as they get there, the rain will continue to kind of fall and lighten up at times, but overall should be a pretty wet experience uh, out there as these rounds of rain continue to move through the area. Good luck and have a great day. Yeah, it is a wet Wednesday. Uh, I think Thursday is going to be more of the same, if not more looking. There's a system working its way up from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, in that area and encompassing a, a big chunk of, of that portion of the country. So I, th I think these are conditions we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of days. Our track conditions presented by John Deere. Dirt is sloppy, no turf racing today. So sloppy and off the turf for this Wednesday. And Kurt's going to go through those scratches and changes later on. So make sure you get your pens out and uh, and change, make those changes accordingly. But here are all of our top selections with those scratches out. We had a pivot this morning, and it does look like we agree in the opener on number four horse, and we also agree in the sixth race on the number four horse. But really, all over the map. Uh, outside of that, 
Make sure you download the Keeneland Race Day app. Stay up to date with all of our picks each and every race day. And also follow us on social media at Keeneland Racing on X, formerly known as Twitter. Facebook at Keeneland, Instagram at Keeneland, and at FanDuel TV. That is their handle on X. And most importantly, download the FanDuel TV Plus app right now. It's available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. If you don't have FanDuel TV on your cable or satellite provider, You'll have it then, or you have it now if you have FanDuel TV+. Plus. Uh, it is the, the opportunity for you to catch the network live, both networks, and a host of on-demand content. So sloppy and off the turf, race number eight is one of those races that is affected greatly by this race coming off the turf course. You can see scratch one through five, scratch 10 through 13, the 14 does go, does participate. He's got this. And then the 15 and 16 are both scratched. So Pipeline, probably the favorite because of the mm -hmm. races that he's coming out of. Is that a fair assessment? For sure. Yeah, I definitely think this horse will be the favorite just because, you know, he's gone against grade one competition before in the past. People will look back at the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile alone and think, well, yeah, this horse is getting a class relief. And that was a race in which he went uh, here at Keeneland back in 2022, ran in the Cigar Mile, tried him on turf last time out uh, in his most recent effort. I'm going to go to Lincoln Highway, the number six horse. Um, this is a son of Quality Road who has only raced on turf outside of one run in the Commonwealth last time out. Now, we show you a backtrack here at Keeneland. This was on the grass when he won as the favorite. This is last fall, and he's going to win this race by a neck. And then last time out in the Commonwealth over at Churchill Downs at the end of that November meet, he ended up finishing fifth. I think this is a different situation. This is a good group, but based on and I, I know we're showing that backtrack but based on the, the commonwealth competition with that that group of three-year-olds it was straight three-year-olds at that point in time and he's obviously graduated to the older horse division gigante gigante northern invader tough horses so he's a son of quality road he's only had one run on the main track johnny velasquez rides i think you've got to be aggressive with him here today have that position obviously it's a small field i'll take my shot with him pipeline likely favorite gets a bit of class relief returning to dirt and they dropped him in class last time out and he didn't run all that bad on the turf course so he looks like he's going to be a legit favorite and then not normal for connor murphy sprinting in his last few stretches back out he's a son of mendelson elusive quality on the damn side i don't i don't think that that's going to hurt him on the dirt today but he may have speed he may be able to get out in front of him and try to take him gate to wire going the mount of 16th to the first wire finish and the short stretch so six seven and nine in race number eight here at Keeneland, the finale. All right, I'm going to the seven. This is going to be my single and any of the tickets that I'm going to play. I think he's going to go off as a heavy favorite. I think with all the scratches and the surface change, this is just a nice little gift package up and just going to hand it to Cherie DeVoe, who sends out this horse. He's a class of the field, Scott. Look at his race and the Cigar Mile two starts back. He was forwardly placed in a very fast pace. This is a look back at the grade one forego. Now, yeah, it was a while ago. It was in August of 2022. But the fact that he finished third behind Cody's Wish and Jackie's Warrior just goes to show you the class relief that this horse is getting. Now, he was trained by Chad Brown at the time. He's been under the care of Cherie DeVoe for the past two starts. And he's a horse that isn't going to cut it at the graded stakes level. And I think Cherie, given his pedigree, being a son of Spitestown, probably tried him on the turf last time out, thinking, well, maybe we can open new opportunities for this horse moving forward. But the fact of the matter is he is getting a huge class relief from his prior dirt performance. I know his cigar mile, which is his most recent dirt effort, looks really bad. But look at the wicked fractions that were posted in that. Going the one turn mile, 22, 44 and 4, 109 flat. He's not going to see anything near that. And I think he can set the tempo early. He ran against Senor Buscador in that race. What did Senor Buscador do recently? Saudi Cup. Won there the Saudi go. Cup. He Just won the hit, Saudi and Cup. And he was, what, second or third in the Dubai World Cup, if yep. I'm thinking correctly. I think correctly. he was third. <clears throat> yeah, so... Sorry, I don't have anything more creative, but it's pipeline for me. He could be two to five now. Yes. Because of you. Sorry. Well, you just knocked the price down that much. I mean, people pipeline. can look at the past performances. No too. longer in the pipeline here in race number eight. Uh, let's go ahead and move along as we'll go to race number seven. That is obviously one race prior because we do run them in order here at Keeneland Racecourse. Scratch uh, the number seven horse 
and the one Sancero. So a field of seven will compete and heartened heartened is the number three horse, the morning line favorite uh, in here. Um, I'm going to native land, the number two at three to one. This is a quote by mastery um, who's run well on and off track. He's he ran in the slop two starts ago. That was the race in which he built off of to break his maiden last time out. And it's a colt who's got a, a big stride on him, and he came from well off the pace last time out to go a mile and an eighth. I do not think that he can run this way and win today. He's got to be more forward, and he does have more speed than what he displayed going nine furlongs on the 9th of March in this race in which we're showing you. He's got to sort of split the difference from his last two races, doesn't he? He can't be that far back, and he's got that candy ride influence. Mm -hmm. He's a son of a mastery. Mentioned he's run well on an off track. Spoke to Riley Mott earlier this morning. Said he's doing well. We know he likes the off track. So native land, candy ride influence as far as the top side pedigree, top side of the pedigree is concerned. I'll put him on top. Heartened comes out of the Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, <coughs> he's back on Lasix today. He broke his maiden two starts back probably the favorite in here but i don't think he has to be and then kitty hawk the number four horse um he broke his maiden last time out when he sprinted two starts back and he was part of that pace he ran against booth and nash two of the more impressive runners that we saw come out of the fall meet that hadn't quite we had not seen them yet mm -hmm. and obviously hadn't shown themselves for what they were going to be capable of moving down the line so don't sleep on kitty hawk son of not this time and sons and daughters of not this time 21 percent win rate on off main tracks yeah, that's good gabby and you get the wildcat air on the bottom side who uh, it's just a very fast type of um, family line and you also get that uh wet track influence as well so i think they overbet rocketeer in there too i think probably that five probably gets overbet a little bit probably we'll see oh the fives on your <clears throat> graphic there yeah third I went to the three heartened. I have this loony idea with the three heartened. Never, never. I just think this horse actually didn't like Tampa Bay Downs. I know he, he won. Broke his maiden I Tampa know, Bay Downs. I know, and I think he did that despite not liking the track that day. If you, I didn't throw in this replay. But when he broke his maiden, he's got his head high in the air. He just has all this funky action. And sometimes horses can run like that at Tampa Bay Downs. They just don't like the kickback. I think he uh, was kind of just awkwardly moving, but yet still won because he's just a horse that has some quality and class to him. He came back in the Tampa Bay Derby. He didn't really break that well. He kind of lagged behind the field behind a very slow pedestrian pace. I really like him today, and I hope we get three to five to two, something seven, five, three to one, three to one, three to one. You'll take three to one. I would take three to one. But I really like it. It wasn't the looniest thing I've ever heard you I say. I know, but, but people it's... are going to be like, "Oh, only broke his maiden," but sometimes horses can overcome that and still win, just like you. You overcame a bad morning, Scott, and I you are winning right now. I did not have a bad morning. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. It's been a brilliant morning, as we've come here. I got to watch you walk in, which viewers will get a chance to see later on if they're turned in, tuned in to, to FanDuel TV. Yep. So I'm very excited about the afternoon. Mm. All right, Let's go race to race six. number six. This is your key race. Yes. Well, it, it was at one point, Scott. But now that it is off the turf, we had to pivot a little bit. The four is going to be the top selection for me, though. Malibu Springs. I believe this horse was my, yeah, he was my top selection uh, when it was originally on the turf as well. I think this is a horse that's just really starting to get good. He always had some talent from the get-go, but uh, his last race was very impressive, breaking his maiden finally. And, um, oh no, I went to Alexis Sorba as the top selection when it was on the turf. But this horse has... Uh, I, good performances on both turf and dirt. And I just think he's a horse that is improving at the right time right now. And I don't think he's going to be that slow on the main track. We look at some of his performances on the dirt before, and he has been able to be forwardly placed. Now, the wet track is going to be an unknown, but he's a son of quality road. So I, I don't think that he's going to have any bit of uh, difficulty handling the surface. So I went to him on top and then the 16 all the way, the outside dissolved. He just does draw in off the AE. If he runs back to his Keeneland race, two starts back, that'll win. He has a good race last time out at Turfway Park. I think at a distance that he probably didn't prefer. And then uh, the one overboard, he's 20 to one on the morning line. He's definitely going to come down off of that just because of the scratches. But 
he's got some really quality dirt races that, you know, look at the price, judge the price. But I think um, this is a horse that you definitely want to include in some of those multi-race wagers. And another thing to keep in mind with this coming to the main track, uh, it's run at a mile. We don't run a lot of mm -hmm. straight mile races on the main track. It's more a mile and a 16th because you've got to start so much closer to that first turn. So being down on the inside, if Overboard can break sharp, he's going to have an advantage. I know it's not a big field with all the scratches, um, but you've got to consider him. I went to the four as well, Malibu Springs. Um, he's He's got forward position in here. There's not going to be a lot to worry about around him, obviously, minus Overbore or potentially Carcano, the number seven horse that can lay, <clears throat> excuse me, can lay close with him, but haven't seen him in seven months. And then the 15 and 16, they do draw in. Albin Jimenez rides Gamer for Hugo Andrade. Um, he's, he's in good form now. This mm -hmm. might be too big of a jump up in class, but with all the scratches, could be a good situation for the son of twirling candy and there's that candy ride sire line once again on gamer the 15 and then dissolved for trainer mike maker broke his maiden on the synthetic he didn't run bad last year no uh, here at keeneland on the main track so i rad's in the saddle i rad i mean he may just be aggressive and, and try to go because that's really the only option that he has so i mean it's going to be a scramble even though there's not a lot of horses competing to try to get position into that first turn because it comes up ultra ultra quick i'm curious to see how the track plays as well today because last week it was really difficult for horses to make up a ton of ground especially at one turn distances obviously we saw sierra leone close from the clouds in the toyota bluegrass but that's sierra leone he's going to be likely favorite or second choice in the kentucky derby so uh we'll see how the track profile changes this week because sometimes yeah. you know it's it's a little bit warmer than it was opening weekend and the it, the rain obviously can change track surfaces so what we knew was the case last week is probably not going to apply this week and the, and it's going to be wet today most mm -hmm. likely wet tomorrow and then start to dry out through the weekend so it's it's an ever-evolving situation we, we play an outdoor sport i mean yeah. that's just that's what it is so you've got to adapt to those uh trends that you may see if you believe in trends there are certain people that don't but if you uh go with that mindset you've got to pay attention to what's happening and maybe readjust your handicapping each and every day it's it's the ultimate thinking man sport thoroughbred horse racing and especially when you're making the biggest investment with your own money our uh, keeneland sales grad spotlight let's take a look at that race number two two-year-old maiden race going four and a half furlongs and we're going to focus on the number 10 horse uh, tapers valor the Taprit Colt for John Hancock, $15,000 Keeneland September yearling. John Hancock does this. He goes in, he spends it around this price point, and he wins with two-year-old horses. Mm -hmm. And this is a Colt that I've heard a lot about. He's got Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. John Hancock suffered a brutal beat in the two-year-old race on Sunday with that what, 60 to one shot that just kept yeah. with him, ran a huge race. Huge. I mean, it, it was a heck of a race. They were lengths Sunday. clear from the third uh, place finisher. Miles. But uh, Tapper's Valor, uh, the 10 horse, worth taking a strong look at in race number two. And we're going to keep with Tapper's Valor, Valor for a couple more segments because he's the horse in the clocker report. He worked, uh, posted a pair of sharp works. Most recent was a blowout from the gate. Barn points its juveniles for this meet, John Hancock and the top jockey, is Tyler Gaffleone. So he worked in 35 and 4. That was the uh, top work of the morning on the 4th of April, best of 15. So Tapper's Valor. I just wonder what kind of price we're going to get. I think there's going to be a lot of Probably uh, money. fair. You think so? I mean, Wesley, the, the benefit is you've got a Wesley, Wesley. Ward run in there, right? Yeah. Raise the bar. So that will take a little heat off of Tapper's Valor. Um, paramutually speaking, in race number two. And I will say one other thing, that uh, race with the big long shot that beat John Hancock's um, two-year-old last week, top three finishers, three outside post positions. And that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't always apply, but those outside post positions are extremely advantageous going four and a half furlongs for these two-year-olds. Because if you don't break well, you can recover, you can get into position. Whereas with those inside draws and the slight bend that they have to go around, yep. they get shuffled back. So keep that in mind because Wesley's horse has to draw the rail today. Let's get into our multi-race exotics. Uh, race number five is where the late pick four begins. 
decent minimum wage here. Don't forget about the doubles, too. The doubles, the pools have been massive um, with that reduction in takeout. So um, if you didn't get a chance to, to wager last weekend and perhaps didn't hear the news, a 7% reduction in double takeout just simply means more money being paid out. And the handicappers, horse players are responding. I'm spending $9 on this ticket in the late pick four. I'll go three deep to start things off in the starter 10, which begins things going six furlongs with the three, eight, and 10. Ghostly Nat night for my, Matt Shire, who's found his level down at Oakland Park earlier in the year. Uh, and that's this level again. Proto Magic, um, who's maintaining f phenomenal form up at Turfway Park. Can it translate to the dirt? I don't see why it won't. He was a good dirt horse prior to that and maybe just has gotten to be a better horse as of late. And then Samarita on the outside off the four-month layoff. Um, he, she likes the off track. She's won twice in four starts. So I'll go three, eight, and ten, singling the number four horse Malibu Springs in race number six, who we've talked plenty about. Um, race number seven, I'll go three deep, two, three, and four in that leg, led by Native Land, Heartened, include him and the four horse Kitty Hawk, Rocketeer. If you've got more of a budget, maybe throw him in for Brad Cox and Tyler Gaffleone. And then in race number eight, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to lean on the six and nine to get us through and hopefully secure this ticket. Nine dollar investment. Obviously, this is a starting point if you wish to start or build off of this because of how low the ticket cost is with the 50 cent minimum wager or punch it a couple of times. I, I, I saw you run over to the to the window and, and the self serve machines and punch it. What? Ten times. Yeah. No, I don't run. I walk. You do walk. I do walk. You okay. saunter. I saunter. I float. Um, race five. I'm going to take a stab at the late pick four. My ticket's a little bit more expensive than yours, but I thought race five was a race that you wanted to have some coverage in. So the one Goshen is my top selection. I think she hits the ground runner, running under Tyler Gaffleone from the rail. I hope that she can go gate to wire on the class relief here. But if not, we're going to back it up with a three ghostly knight who might get aggressive right by Irad Ortiz Jr. She has some speed that she showed before in the past. We just haven't seen that lately. If everything falls apart, the 8, Proto Magic, I think, can pick up the pieces late. And then the 10, Samarita, uh, you know, she's going to show speed from the outside post too, but she has to clear the entire field. I think the 1 gets the, the advantage on her. The 6th race, the 4 I mentioned that I liked, Malibu Springs, I think she'll be forwardly placed. He will, excuse me, and the 6 Dissolved is the other horse for me, for Mike Maker. Seventh race, two, three, five. We already went through this race. I like the three heartened, the horse who broke its maiden at Tampa Bay Downs, despite not liking the track at Tampa Bay Downs. The two native land also, and then the five rockets here for Brad Cox. Finally, we get to the eighth and final race, the seven and the nine. The seven is going to be the top selection for me, Pipeline, but he's going to be the heavy favorite. Oh, I lied. I lied. Sorry, I'm a liar. I said that I singled this horse. I didn't. I'm sorry, Scott. I'm I'm scrambling today. Uh, you can single if you if you'd like, but I did back myself up with the nine. Not normal. It you would, think good idea, bad idea? Backing up with the nine, just single. I, feel I don't like, have a problem with the nine. Okay. But it wouldn't be a day if you weren't scrambling. Let's just let's just be honest yeah, there. But less than usual. Best surprisingly. angles of the day. Let's go back to Tapper's Valley. I mentioned that this horse would get plenty of attention. Four to one on the morning line. The Wesley Ward runner raised the bar is two to one. If if I get anywhere near two to one on Tapper's Valor, I think that that's that is going to be a great price on the ten. Great, not good. Great, great, because this is a like I said, this is a horse that I've heard plenty about. It's John Hancock v. Wesley Ward outside draw. I'm going to drop the fifty dollar win hammer on the two in race number two. As simple as that. You might want to back yourself up with a little 25 win place because no. I'm coming for you. I'm all, okay, who, so who do you have in there? The 7, Tuxedo Park. This is a very interesting pedigree. So this is going to be my best angle. Tuxedo Park, he's a son of complexity, which is a freshman sire. We haven't seen his progeny before. Uh, we'll take a look at 
complexities win in the grade one champagne. He was very good at the age of two. He won this grade one at the age of two. And then he went on to beat the likes of Code of Honor and the Kelso. He's a very nice horse for Klarovich Stables, and I'm excited to see his progeny. He himself is a son of McLean's music. And then on the family, the female family line, um, this horse is related to two first out two-year-old winners. So you get precocity on the top side and on the bottom side. Looks like he's been working really forwardly. And I love this. We'll see if it works out for me. It's not as much as 10 pounds off because Mancata is not on anymore. It's uh, Belmere is now aboard. So, but still carries 112. It was 109 and now carries 112. Still a tremendous weight break. And I think that's going to help in terms of getting out of the gate and showing speed. I hope. This is going to be light as a feather. Joe Belmer, by the way, if you're not familiar with the name, he has spent the winter down at Oaklawn Park. Did very well. And he's had some some success. And he's he's a very young man. He's he's a a late teenager, if I'm not mistaken. Did he have like a multiple win day, I think? That I'm not aware of. I think he might have had a multiple win day, which is a tremendous, if he did, it's a tremendous feat, especially at Oaklawn. Let's go to Tom Leach for his Wednesday long shot pick of the day. Long shot on this Wednesday card comes in the fourth race. Going to go to number 10, Stately Order. Stately Order is by Street Sense, and Street Sense was okay on synthetic, but was much better on the main track that Stately Order gets here coming off a synthetic race. This horse also is out of a tappet mare, so pedigree there to get all kinds of distance. And you get Jose Ortiz in the saddle. That's a nice bonus at a big price for Stately Order. And Tom had a nice uh, long shot pick of the day come in on Saturday. And the name, I for the Bo light, Cruz. Bo Cruz, thank you. That's why I'm Bo here. Bo Cruz got it done. Um, as we've mentioned, wet conditions today. We may get a little bit of rain later on today. If you're like me and don't have an umbrella because Gabby lost it, and I'm sure there are other people out here Five that have years lent ago. umbrellas to Gabby, you've lost it, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Head, <laughs> head over to the Keeneland Gift Shop. They've got everything you need for this rainy afternoon. I can't be the only person who's lent you an umbrella and Take lost it. Take your $9. Instead of investing in their late pick Ford ticket, go to the dollar store and buy yourself four umbrellas so you stop complaining. Enjoy have today, Keeneland. When the spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th. This is the all-new Grand Highlander. Toyota took the best-selling Highlander and made it bigger, more powerful, and more fuel-efficient. With your choice of three different powertrains, including the 362-horsepower Hybrid Max. The interior design is so tech-focused, I'm in total control. And you've got to love the 12.3-inch touchscreen. The big news is right back here with over 20 cubic feet of cargo space. Behind a full-size third room. Step up to something grand. Toyota. Let's go places. At Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard. Not for our sake, but for theirs. For the love of the horse for generations to come.
Keeneland welcomes Sherry Sebastian to the paddock. A Grayson County native, Sherry is currently the Franklin County First District Magistrate and vocalist for the band Twist of Fate. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Keeneland is proud to recognize Rosalie Freeman from admissions as the employee of the day. Congratulations, Rosalie.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse, where the main track is sloppy, and we are off the turf today. All eight races to be contested on the main track, which currently is listed sloppy. Time now for a look at all of the program changes beginning of the first race. The opener today is where the first of the day is rolling doubles and pick threes and the early pick five all get underway. In the first race, scratch the one, West Coast Harbor, and scratch two, Up the Creek. That's in the first race, scratch the one, West Coast Harbor, and scratch two, Up the Creek. Second race, start of the early pick four, take out the also eligibles, 13, 14, and 15. They did not draw into the race. A couple of jockey changes in that event. On number three, Mohair Sam, the jockey, Luan Machado. Number three, Mohair Sam, the jockey, Luan Machado. Jockey change on the seven, Tuxedo Park. That'll be Joseph Bielmeer. Number seven, Tuxedo Park. Joseph Bielmeer will be the jockey. Double bug allowance here, and the weight is 112 pounds. Double bug allowance, and the weight 112 pounds for the seven, Tuxedo Park. And again, the jockey, Joseph Bielmeer. The third race, third race is where the pick six begins. Again, it's all main track today. In that third race, scratch the two center stage, scratch the seven, Anna's Wish, and scratch the eight, Echo Foxtrot. That's in the third race, scratch two center stage, scratch seven, Anna's Wish, and scratch eight, Echo Foxtrot. Fourth race, start of the late pick five. In that fourth event, scratch the one, Money Memolo. Scratch the five, Cause a Ruckus. Scratch number nine, Battleborn. Also scratch 13, 14, and 15. That's in the fourth race. Scratch number one, Money Memolo. Scratch the five, Cause a Ruckus. Scratch the nine, Battleborn. Also scratch 13, 14, and 15. Race 5, start of the late pick 4. And in race 5, there's an overweight, the 6 band from Midway, the jockey, 1 pound over. That's in race 5, overweight, the 6 band from Midway, the jockey, 1 pound over. Sixth race, race 6, off the turf, 1 mile, main track. Sixth race, off the turf, one mile, main track. A reminder that on the main track, when we go a mile, those races finish in the short stretch at the first wire. In that sixth race, scratch the two, Tiverton. Also scratch the three, Baratini. Scratch the six, Exemplified. Also scratch the eight, Passing Judgment. The nine, Mischievous Angel. The ten, Battle of Normandy. Also scratch the 11, Alexis Sorba. Scratch the 12, Pork Roll. Scratch 13, Karoom. And scratch 14, Ailman. Again, that's in the sixth race. Scratch the two, Tiverton. Scratch three, Baratini. Scratch six, Exemplified. Also scratch eight, Passing Judgment. Nine, Mischievous Angel. Ten, Battle of Normandy. Also scratch 11, Alexis Zorba, 12, Pork Roll, 13, Karoom, and 14, Ailman. Please note, number 15 draws into the race. Gamer will run, but there is a jockey change, Albin Jimenez. 15, Gamer draws in the jockey, Albin Jimenez, and please note the 16, Dissolved, will also draw into the race. Irad Ortiz Jr. as programmed will be the jockey there. One other note on race six. There's an overweight on the one overboard, the jockey one pound over. Number one overboard, the jockey one pound over. Seventh race. In the seventh event, scratch the one, San Siro. Scratch the six, Morvino. And scratch the seven, Facenda. That's the seventh race. Scratch the one, San Siro. Scratch the six, Morvino. And scratch the seven, Facenda. The eighth and final race. Race eight, off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth main track. Race eight, off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth main track. And, of course, those mile and a sixteenth races on the main track 
also finish in the short stretch at the first wire. In that eighth race, scratch the one Reckoning Force, scratch the two Greek Order, scratch three Deer District, scratch four February Sun, also scratch the five Leave It to Kitten, also scratch the ten Noises Off, scratch the eleven American Diamond, also scratch the 12 Balloony, scratch the 13 Bloodline, also scratch number 15 Brumba Waffle Toes, and scratch the 16 High Tide. That's in race eight. Once again, scratch one Reckoning Force, two Greek Order, three Deer District, four February Sun, five Leave It to Kitten, also scratch 10 Noises Off, 11 American Diamond, 12 Balloony, 13 Bloodline, and also scratch 15 Brumba Waffle Toes and 16 High Tide. Please note the 14 draws into the race. 14, he's got this, will run Corey Lannery to ride as programmed. Because of the scratches in race 8, no Superfecta, no Super High Five, on that eighth event. And those are the current program changes. Right now, let's check in with Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudette. Very happy Wednesday to you, Kirk Becker. And for those of you joining us for this eight race card, and hopefully you got all those scratches and changes from Kirk because there are a lot of them on this Wednesday with the wet weather and no turf racing. It took me a while to get through those, and hopefully they're all correct, because sometimes that uh, isn't the case. But yeah, we're here. Look, still a great a product. You can only do so much about the weather, so you pivot. And I always say this, on off-the-turf days, this these are the days that you find value, because usually the betting public, uh, you know, bets the wrong types of horses, or at least the wrong types of favorites. So uh, lots of value on days like this. Bloodlines will be key. We'll point towards those. Mm -hmm. If you miss any of those scratches, and changes kurt and we will do our best to keep you up to date and we will keep you up to date on the course of this card the featured race race number eight one of those races taken off the turf course who goes off as the favorite here does it go to lincoln highway now for vicky oliver off the four-month layoff it's a tough read but again you got to look at pedigrees and those that have experience not normal the nine has experience on the off track but it'll be interesting to see how this race plays out from a wagering perspective. I think the seven pipeline will probably go off as the favorite just because of his race in the grade one four go. He finished third in that event behind Cody's wish. And I definitely think this is a horse that is enhanced by it coming off the turf. Happy Wednesday. We'll get started at the top of the hour with the first of eight to kick off this new week here at Keeneland. We're just now 18 minutes away from the top of the hour and the first race here at Keeneland Racecourse. Once again, scratch the one and two. So down to a field of seven. The three draws the rail, the favorite, because of those two scratches to her inside. Charm of the song is the direction I go to start off the card. This is a filly dropping in for a maiden 50 tag and dropping in class into this maiden claiming ranks for the first time in her career for trainer Ian Wilkes. Brian Hernandez Jr. will ride for the very first time. She's run on turf. She's run on dirt. She's gone long on turf. And now today drops in for 50, which may be the biggest change that she's needed over the course of her career. She comes out of a live race at Gulfstream in early February, about two months ago. And her dirt races were not bad. Her race at Churchill and Gulfstream on the Dirt Against Maiden Special Weight Company will go a long way versus this group here this afternoon. And she draws just to the outside of Blue Eyed Soul, who likely will be the pace setter from the inside if this filly is as speedy as she's been in her two starts. Uh, she's a filly that was debuted here last year at Keeneland at the end of the meet in those two-year-old races uh, in April of 2023. So Blue Eyed Soul is the favorite at even money, but I go with Charm of the Song as the top selection for myself right now, the third choice in the wagering. 
the outside filly, the number nine horse spiritual lady, Tyler Gaffleon for Joe Sharp. Uh, she's been in a maiden claimer in the past. In fact, a couple of times she's been, she has run at a level similar to this. She ran in a maiden $45,000 claiming event on the 31st of December, final day of her two-year-old campaign, finished second that day. That was in the mud and she's run twice in the mud and run well enough to expect her to put together a solid effort. I think if you're looking at this filly in her form, you're not going to hold the off track, the sloppy track against her. She's drawn to the outside. We'll see what Tyler opts to do with this filly going six furlongs, but I wouldn't be surprised if she's able to get up close to those inside fillies that we just talked about, Blue-Eyed Soul and Charm of the Song down the backstretch, which very well could be key to her putting in a effort to put herself in contention win, finish second or third, however it turns out for Spiritual Lady from the outside. And then the number seven horse, that is Brownie Bay for Fausto Gutierrez. This is a twirling candy filly who also takes the biggest drop in class in racing. Maiden Special Way Company to the maiden tag here today. And I look at this filly based on that pedigree. Mentioned would be pointing towards pedigrees that typically work when the main track comes up wet as we have here today. She's a daughter of twirling candy, 17% winners overall, which is a strong number from a sample size of well over 1,000 horses from sons and daughters of twirling candy that have run on an off track. So 17% win rate there. It's the candy ride influence. Anytime you see candy ride as the stallion or sons of candy ride as twirling candy obviously is, and also a horse like mastery later on today, we'll see that represented with one of the feature races here today. If you see candy ride on either the top or bottom side of the pedigree, that will go a long way on and off track. So I'm banking on that with the number seven Brownie Bay for her to move forward with the drop in class and the wet conditions She'll be competing over here today. Race number one started the early pick five. Good pull over $129,000. 50 cent minimum wager there. Don't forget about the daily doubles, which roll throughout the card here today. And that reduced takeout for this meet reduced down to 15%. And the pools have been very, very good. The handicappers and you horse players out there have responded to that reduction in takeout in the daily double wagers here at Keeneland Racecourse. Less than 14 minutes away from the Wednesday opener. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race. Again, we are off the turf today, and all eight races will be contested on the main track, which is listed sloppy. First race starts the first of the day. is rolling doubles and pick threes. Start of the early pick five. In the opener, scratch the one, West Coast Harbor, and scratch two up the creek. Maiden claiming race for the opener today. Phillies and mares, age three, end up $50,000, the claiming price. Six furlongs over the main track, listed sloppy. An all-main track Wednesday card, post time for the first in seven minutes. Less than six minutes away from the opener. A couple of fillies in here really stood out to me in the paddock, and they are big prices. How about 13 to 1 on Goldie's Lock for Michelle Level? This is a filly that looks well turned out. She's fit, ready to go. She's too dropping in class for the first time to this maiden claiming ranks like so many of these others in here that we've talked about. But from a looks perspective, she looks awesome. Daughter of Firing Line out of a Lord Carson first dam. Goldie's Locks. If she runs to her looks, she could have herself right there in the end as she'll go six furlongs for the first time since a sloppy track run that kicked off her career almost a year ago in the early portion of that two-year-old season. But Goldie's Locks, from a looks perspective, looks like she could be primed to outrun those 13 to 1 odds. And then even more so, piggybacking off of that sentiment with the five-horse Gift Gorgeous, she is a beautiful daughter of Run Happy for Keith DeSormo. She is currently sitting at odds of 14 to 1 on the board. She just, to me, stood out in this group, watching them come out onto the track and watching them down in the paddock. She's only run one time. She was a huge price that day at Fairgrounds on the turf course, 28 to 1. Ran like a 28 to 1 shot would be expected to, fourth beat in 10 lengths. But this drop in class that she takes and the move over to the main track that she makes and the way that she looks, uh, 14 to 1. Don't sleep on this daughter of Run Happy. And we speaking about pedigrees, Sons and daughters of Run Happy, the offspring of that champion sprinter, Run Happy, 18% winners. That's right up there with some of the better numbers that you'll see for stallions represented with wet main tracks to compete over. So long shots in here, the five and the eight based on looks. Uh, consider those if you're playing the pick five, especially where the pool is closing in on $200,000. But the three remains the favorite, Blue-Eyed Soul, for trainer Wesley Ward and the Coolmore Connections, daughter of No Nay Never, returning to Keeneland, for the first time since the beginning of her two-year-old campaign, almost a year back where she was second as the 83, 83 cents on the dollar favorite, the odds-on favorite in that race. We'll see if, see if she can pick up win number one of her career from post position number one. Good luck. Race one coming up here at Keeneland.
think you go get them both back. <laughs> Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race. Moving into line, first race, all main track today, main track sloppy. Brownie Bay going into the gate. Gift Gorgeous now coming forward. Spiritual Lady will be the last to load. Goes in. They are at the post. And they're off. Spiritual Lady, quick into stride. Blue-Eyed Soul is right there, though, and a step quicker to the inside. Blue-Eyed Soul moves up, has the lead a half length. Spiritual Lady will go second from the outside, and then a break of three more lengths to Brownie Bay, who's in third. Gift Gorgeous far outside is in fourth. Lady June between horses in fifth with Goldie's Lock, and then Charm of the Song, who's down toward the inside, travels in last against the rail, just over five lengths from the lead as they head for the far turn. The opening quarter, 22.44 seconds. Blue-Eyed Soul is the leader. Blue-Eyed Soul against the rail. Leads it by a half length. Spiritual Lady goes second. A gap of six more lengths then. Back to Gift Gorgeous, who moves up on the outside. Into third. Around Brownie Bay in fourth. Goldie's Lock is fifth against the rail. Charm of the Song is in sixth. And Lady June last of seven. Spiritual Lady draws alongside of Blue-Eyed Soul. These two eight lengths to the good. Spiritual Lady tries to poke ahead in front. Blue-Eyed Soul fights on to the inside. These two into the final furlong. Then a gap of seven more lengths to gift Gorgeous Charm of the Song and Goldie's Lock to the inside. Spiritual Lady, the leader, and she's drawing clear past the 16th pole. Spiritual Lady, Tyler Gaffalione, a widening three-length lead, a deep stretch. Spiritual Lady wins the opener. And then it was Goldie's Lock who rallied up on the outside on the wire to grab second.
The daughter of Nyquist for Joe Sharp and Tyler Gaff-Leone, able to keep up with the speed of the favorite blue-eyed soul and wear her down. An observation from the first race here at Keeneland Racecourse, you can see how far off the inside these riders opted to stay with the water on the main track. Four to one on the number nine horse as one of the second choices here in race number one. Jordan Wyckoff, the winning owner. The five rallying up for second. The three fades the third. Nine, five, three unofficial in race number one. Unofficial results of Keeneland's first race. Nine Spiritual Lady finished first. Five Goldie's Lock was second. Three Blue Eyed Soul was third. And four Charm of the Song fourth. Nine, five, three, four, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's first race, nine Spiritual Lady, owned by Jordan Wyckoff and trained by Joe Sharp and the jockey Tyler Gaffleone. Spiritual Lady, a three-year-old filly by Nyquist. Out of spirit, let's hear it by Girolamo. Winner bred in Kentucky by Redmond Farm, LLC. Six furlongs over the sloppy track today. One minute, 12.68 seconds. Results of Keeneland's first race, official, 9-5-3-4, the official results of Keeneland's first. Race two is coming up. A reminder, all eight races today will be contested on the main track, which is currently listed sloppy. We are off the turf today. Race two starts for the next of the days, rolling doubles and pick threes and starts the early pick four. Take out the also eligibles 13, 14, and 15. They did not draw into the race a reminder, the jockey for number three, Mohair Sam, is Luan Machado. Number three, Mohair Sam, Luan Machado. And the jockey of the seven, Tuxedo Park, will be Joe Belmer. Number seven, Tuxedo Park, the jockey Joe Belmer. There is a double bug allowance. The weight is 112 pounds.
Race number two, our third two-year-old race of the spring here at Keeneland Race Course. And we're going to go to the number 10 horse on top. That is Tapers Valor for John Hancock. John Hancock, one of the well-known barns for two-year-old horses here in the springtime at Keeneland Race Course, suffered a very tough, tough defeat on Sunday with a runner that was live on the tote board, went off at 3-1, to one, but a big price runner, long shot, hung right with that runner, that filly on Sunday, and just nailed her on the wire. And Tapers Valor is a colt by Taprit that they purchased for $15,000 at last year's Keeneland September sale. And that's about the price range in which John Hancock is able to acquire nice young horses and turn them into quick two-year-olds here during the spring meet. So the price that we're getting on this colt is very, very fair. Again, Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle, outside draw. Uh, Tapers Valor, to me, at this price or anywhere near it, even at three to one or two to one for that matter, I think is worth a gamble. But nine to two, four and a half to one right now on Tapers Valor. Uh, we'll see how this one uh, competes for John Hancock, who's b both of the two-year-old runners we've seen out of his barn from opening day to Sunday have run very well. And the expectations in these two-year-old races always revolve around the Wesley Ward barn. He's made a name for himself here at Keeneland with two-year-old horses and getting them ready for big races in the springtime and, and in the summer months, whether it be um, at New York, Monmouth Park, over at Churchill Downs, or even heading over to Royal Ascot, uh, where he has made such an impact on the international scene there. And this is a cult by McLean's Music from a Bernardini first stand, one of the best broodmare sires that we have in the sport. He's a half-brother to two two-year-old winners. Both of those two-year-old winners that were half-siblings to this colt were winners up in Ohio at Belterra. So encouraging to see that this colt is here at Keeneland on the bigger stage. Three to two on the board. Has to be quick from post one. The Wesley Ward two-year-olds that, that run big and show up here in the springtime typically are quick but raise the bar three to two on the board right now uh, as we get ready for race number two. And then the number seven horse, Tuxedo Park for Paul McEntee, a complexity colt first crop for that son of McLean's music, the stallion. Uh, this is a colt that's a half brother to a uh, two-year-old winner as well. He's had plenty of workouts. He's had two local workouts at Keeneland, one of which was 48 and four out of the starting gate from that standstill aspect uh, versus the in motion uh, beginnings of most of the workouts that we see. So when you see that G in the workout designations, that means they break from the starting gate. Um, so when you see that kind of a workout, that's a positive. And then it worked over the mud as well here at Keeneland on the 31st, so 10 days ago. So has experience with conditions like this. And Joe Belmer is in the saddle. That's a rider change on this two-year-old Colt. Seven to one on the board right now. We'll get a good look at these two-year-olds once they get saddled up and head trackside for race number two. 17 minutes to post. Does begin the first pick four opportunity of the day and the 15% takeout daily doubles continue to roll over the course of the afternoon. Two-year-olds, race number two, four and a half furlongs on the sloppy main. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race, the Belmar. Maiden special weight, two-year-olds, four and a half furlongs over the Heedley course. Main track is listed sloppy. A reminder, all eight races today at Keeneland will be contested on the main track. In race two, take out the also eligibles, 13 through 15. They did not draw into the race. A reminder, the jockey for the three, Mohair Sam, is Luan Machado. Number three, Mohair Sam, the jockey, Luan Machado. And number seven, Tuxedo Park, make the jockey, Joe Belmer. Seven, Tuxedo Park, the jockey, Joe Belmer, double bug allowance, 112 pounds. 112 pounds to be carried by the seven, Tuxedo Park. Double pick three, start of the early pick four, post time, less than five minutes, track sloppy. Less than three minutes away from race number two, the third two-year-old race of this spring meet. And from an overall perspective, this is the best-looking group overall from top to bottom group of two-year-olds, in my opinion, that I have seen here this spring. And happy flyers where I'll begin. Son of Run Happy for Marcus O'Donnell, a homebred for uh, Mattress Mac, James McInvale, who campaigned Run Happy, that champion sprinter and Breeders' Cup sprint winner. Like the way that he looks. He's 12 to 1 right now. He's drawn right next to the favorite raise the bar but from a looks perspective looks uh, well turned out and fit and ready to go here today as he's been training locally at the thoroughbred training center here in lexington kentucky he's 12 to 12 to 1 on the board right now sergeant caps the number four horse another one that looks good there he is warming up under declan cannon he's a half brother to some two-year-old winners as well the mayor has been productive private estate she's had four runners from four starters and all four winners and uh, we'll see how he fares. A Keeneland September sale graduate from last year of just $6,000, son of the champion West Coast. Sergeant Capps making a good impression uh, here in the paddock as well as as he's warmed up for race number two. And then let's go over to the number six horse, Ace It, another Keeneland graduate. Keeneland November sale purchase from back in 2022, $2,500 purchase by Jimmy Cat Chapman, who is the co-owner of this two-year-old gelding. Spoke to Jimmy about this horse. He said, big, good-looking, quick colt. One of the things that he mentioned, he says, Jose Ortiz riding. I'm using Jose Ortiz when they're good ones. So do what you will with that one. And obviously there's Jose Ortiz in the saddle. He is nine to one on the board right now. Positive conversation with the trainer, James Chapman, Jimmy Chapman, with this two-year-old son of Connect, that grade one winning son of Curlin. Favorite is still the one. Nothing to knock there from a looks perspective on raise the bar. It's a Wesley Ward trainee. I continue to go with the number 10 horse that is Tapers Valley, who remains a phenomenal price of odds of four to one. Early pick four begins here. One minute to post.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, the Belmar, start of the early pick four. All eight races at Keeneland today on the main track, which is listed sloppy. Moving into line, race two. Mohair Sam goes into the gate. Sergeant Caps coming forward. Now Miss Behaven. Ace it. Cupid's Thunder, the last one, moving in. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. There goes Cupid's Thunder from the outside. Here's Raise the Bar. Raise the Bar takes the lead. Tuxedo Park's second. Enduring Spirit is away running in third. Happy Flyer is fourth. Mohair Sam is fifth. Bottoms up is sixth. Cupid's Thunder broke well, but now drops back into the seventh position. Tapers Valor down toward the inside in eighth. Misbehave in ninth. Acet is in tenth. Akin Musseri is eleventh. And Sergeant Caps is last to the twelve. Up front, Raise the Bar with Happy Flyer moving to the inside. And that's the battle for the lead with a quarter mile to go. Tuxedo Cedo Park is down toward the rail third, five lengths off the leader, Enduring Spirit. Fourth on the outside, and Raise the Bar has the lead. Opens up here by two, by three lengths, coming past the eighth pole. Raise the Bar is in front. Tuxedo Park takes aim, runs on from second on the outside. Final 16th, though, for Raise the Bar, who's not been asked for much here from John Velasquez, and Raise the Bar just cruises on home to take this race for two-year-olds. Tuxedo Park was second. Akin Musseri rallied up for third, and then Mohair Sam finished in fourth. A prototypical Wesley Ward two-year-old winner here at Keeneland during the spring. Break sharp, open up, and not look back. This was as easy as it gets. You can see Johnny Velasquez, the Hall of Fame jockey, looking around for the competition. He never had to move. This was as easy as it gets for the son of McLean's music. The Texas-bred son of McLean's music goes off at even money and does not disappoint. Up for second, the seven tuxedo park. Akin Musri at 73 to 1 completes the trifecta and finishing fourth, the number three horse, Mohair Sam. 1793 in race two. The unofficial results of Keeneland's second race, number one, raised the bar, was first.
Number seven, Tuxedo Park was second. Number nine, Akinmusery third. Number three, Mohair Sam was fourth. One, seven, nine, three, unofficial. Race two, results official. 1793, the official results. Official winner of Keeneland's second race, the Belmar, number one, raised the bar. Owned by Doug Scarborough, trained by Wesley Ward, the jockey John Velasquez. Raised the bar, a two year old son of McLean's music, out of Pascali by Bernardini, the winner bred in Texas by Douglas Scarborough. 52.17 seconds. The time for the Heedley course the track is sloppy today. Four and a half furlongs. 52.17. And the winner circled the trophy presentation for the Belmar to the connections of Raise the Bar. Keeneland's third race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, also started the pick six. We are off the turf today. All races at Keeneland today to be contested on the main track, which is listed sloppy. In this third race, scratch the two center stage, scratch the seven Anna's Wish, and scratch the eight Echo Foxtrot. That's in this third race, scratch the two center stage, scratch the seven Anna's Wish, and scratch the eight Echo Foxtrot. As a result of those scratches, no superfecta, no superfecta on this third event. And again, as a reminder, we are on the main track only today. We are off the turf, so a reminder looking ahead, race six, off the turf, one mile on the main track. That is race six, off the turf, one mile on the main track. And race eight, off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Race eight, off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. A reminder, one mile races and mile and a sixteenth races on the main track both finish in the short stretch at the first wire.
A field of five getting set for race number three in this starter allowance event. Six furlongs the distance. These are fillies and mares three and up. And it's a starter for those three and up fillies and mares which have not, which have started for a claiming price of 30000 or less and which have not won three races lifetime. And it makes it a very competitive field as the tote board is telling you. There are co-longest shots in this five horse field at odds of five to one as Tightly grouped of a ho group of horses, as you will see from a paramutual perspective, with two five to one sh long shots occupying the biggest prices in this field. The eight is a scratch in here. The seven also a scratch, as well as the two. So two, seven, and eight, the three scratches in here. So a field of five led by the number four horse right now as the seven to five favorite. I've got the five horse on top, as you can see on your screen. Classic performer for Grant Forrester getting back on dirt. This has been a filly that's been ultra consistent over the course of her career. Yes, she's had a couple of races where she's been beaten 13, finishing eighth, finished ninth, three starts back, but it was only beaten three and three quarters. And then last time out, she was a huge price at 21 to one against first level allowance competition. She fits this group. She broke her maiden and was DQ'd at Monmouth last summer, came right back to Laurel 1. She won for 15000 That was the day they took her. That's the day she got eligible for this starter condition. And at odds of 5-2, to two, we'll see how she handles the off track. She's a daughter of Mendelssohn. You've got that ca candy ride pedigree on the damn side of things this time with the first damn high performer. So I'm, I'm hopeful that she can be quick away from there. She's well turned out, dappled, as you can see down in the paddock. Classic performer, my top play at odds of five to two. The number eight horse is a scratch, as I mentioned in here. So that moves the number four into my second spot. That is bestseller for Rudy Brisset, a Bodie Meister filly who is the current eight to five favorite. She comes off of synthetic and a turf try down at Gulfstream Park going longer. She'll shorten up in distance. And she's won here at Keeneland when she broke her maiden for 30 or 20, excuse me, back in October of 2022. She did so by 11 lengths. It's been a mixed bag of efforts since then. Good race, bad race, good race, bad race, kind of that back and forth pattern. But she fits this group as much as anything. She eligible for this race, having run for the 20 back in 2022. She's a non as a three eligible filly, so obviously fits that uh, condition as they all do in here. So we'll see how she fares on the cutback in distance. She may have to come from a bit off the pace if the five goes out in front of her, and that's why I gave the edge to the number five horse classic performer between these two here in race number three. 17 minutes to post. Again, track is listed as sloppy. And the doubles will continue to roll pick threes as well. 50 cent pick three begins with race three, as does the Wednesday pick six with a $1 minimum. Good luck.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race. Starter allowance, fillies and mares, age three and up, six furlongs over the sloppy main track. Scratch number two, center stage. Also scratch the seven, Anna's Wish, and scratch the eight, Echo Foxtrot. As a result of those scratches, no superfecta on this third race, but there is double and pick three wagering, and it is the start of an all-main track Pick six. Off the turf today, all main track. Pick six. Track is sloppy. Seven minutes till post. In color, the one horse, six to one for Eric Foster. Now, here's a horse that started off her career in Southern California with, well, shouldn't, didn't say start off her career. She was with a uh, Southern California-based trainer, Phil D'Amato, for most of her career, and that was three consecutive starts where she didn't run bad. So you got to have some speed in those sprint races in Southern California at places like Santa Anita or Del Mar. Six to one on the board right now with this filly being protected. She looks well enough versus the others in here from a looks perspective, and she was third last time out after setting the pace. She's going to have to be quick from the inside, and we'll see what Abel Cedillo is able to do, and if he can float out and get off the rail as we've seen these riders make the effort to do in the first two races. So in color at six to one, I would well prefer her over the other six to one shot in here. If you're looking for that long shot, the number six horse who we'll get to in a moment. The four uh, bestseller, uh, she was definitely the most on the muscle filly down here in the paddock. I think it's a positive sign. She's got course form at Keeneland, Flavian Pratt is riding two to one on the board with the Bodemeister filly, uh, like what I saw from an energy, energy perspective down in the paddock, and now she's carried that out onto the racetrack as she warms up with the pony. And then It's a Bling Thing, the six, the th four-year-old daughter of Pontiff, who is a son of Giants Causeway. Just noticed that she, it seemed like she got hot in the blink of an eye because I didn't see this when she was in the paddock, but as she came out, you can see the lather worked up on her neck, and it's by no means a cool or a warm day rather here at Keeneland Racecourse. It's definitely a cool day. So you can see uh, the sweat. I believe there's even a bit of sweat underneath the saddle cloth on the number six horse as she sits at six to one. But uh, tightly grouped group of when it comes to the wagering, the pick six over $20,000 as it begins here in race number three at Keeneland with less than four minutes to post. Good luck.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race. Start of the all-main track, pick six. Moving into line for the third race. In color goes in. First hill into line. Best seller comes forward. Two to load. Classic performer. Then it's a bling thing as we get ready to start the pick six. Last one. Going in. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. It's a bling thing, broke alertly. It's a bling thing, and also in color, and classic performer who's between that pair, and in color moves up the rail for the lead. In color takes over the lead here by almost a full length. Classic performer goes second. Now, it's a bling thing broke well, but now drops back from that front pair. There's a gap of three and a half lengths. Here comes a move from first hill up the inside to challenge for third, takes third by three quarters of a length. It's a bling thing is now in fourth. Best seller is last of the five, running seven lengths off the lead, onto the far turn, 22.49 seconds. That was the time for the opening quarter. In Color is the leader. In Color has the lead and leads Classic Performer now by just over two lengths. Then a gap of four more lengths back to First Hill. A margin of eight more back of that one to the two trailers. It's a bling thing to the outside and best seller to the inside who's last off the far turn. In Color with Classic Performer coming from the outside and First Hill looks for an opening down toward the inside. Here comes First Hill up the rail. Classic Performer clear sailing from the outside. In color is between that pair. These three into the final furlong. First hill up the rail. Puts ahead in front. Classic performer needs to find more. 16th pole because first hill is rolling on. And first hill, that rail move did the job. John McKee, first hill to win it. Classic performer was second in color third. Bestseller fourth. And it's a bling thing fifth. Well, Kurt Becker hits the nail on the head in his race call. The willingness by Johnny McKee and First Hill to stay down on the inside and use all that real estate that was made available with the one opting to remain off the rail was the winning situation for the three First Hill to find himself in. And the five coming wide off the turn with the one staying off the rail, it comes together. And this daughter of West Coast springs a very mild upset at odds of seven to two. And in the process of doing so, picks up her third win in a row. The unofficial results of Keeneland's third race. Number three, First Hill, was first. Number five, Classic Performer, was second. Number one, In Color, third. And number four, Best Seller, fourth. Three, five, one, four, unofficial.
In the winner's circle for Keeneland's third race, number three, First Hill, owned by Thomas Basler and Dennis Pohl, trained by James Watkins' John McKee, the jockey. First Hill, four-year-old daughter of West Coast, out of singlet by Real Quiet, bred in Kentucky by Shortleaf Stable. Six furlongs over the main track, listed sloppy, one minute, 11.12 seconds. Third race results official, 3514, the official results. Keeneland's fourth race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering start of the late pick five. Again, an all main track, late pick five. And the track listed sloppy. In the fourth race, scratch the one money memo low. Scratch the five, cause of ruckus. Scratch the nine, battleborn. Also scratch 13, 14, and 15. That's in this fourth race. Scratch the one, money memo low. Scratch the five, cause of ruckus. Scratch the nine, Battleborn. Also scratch 13, 14, and 15. Off the turf today, all races on the main track listed sloppy.
21 minutes away from race number four here at Keeneland Racecourse. This will begin the late pick five. The popular late pick five opportunity begins with race number four. This is a maiden $20,000 claimer for three-year-olds and up, and they'll be going the testing distance of a mile and an eighth. And so often when you deal with a class level like this and a distance like this, it's a matter of finding who can see out the trip, who can see out the full nine furlongs. I go to the outside runner, the number 12 horse, top of the street for trainer Kenny McPeak, a colt by street boss who's not gone this far, has gone as far as a mile and a 16th over the course of his career, and he runs very evenly with faster paces in those shorter races. I think that the mile and an eighth at this level, that combination is going to be good enough for him to break through even with this outside draw with Brian Hernandez Jr. in the saddle. Now they'll have some ground to work with going into the first turn to try to navigate where they're going to end up. And this is a Colt by Street Boss that is actually entered in the upcoming Keeneland April sale. Mark your calendars as that will take place right after closing day, after the races wrap up on that Friday of closing day here at Keeneland. We'll head down the hill to the Keeneland Sale Pavilion to the popular Keeneland April Sale where this Colt is entered to be offered in that Keeneland April Sale. But I think the distance, the drop in class, that combination is going to be a very positive move by these connections for this three-year-old Colt here today. He's two to one. He just clicked down to the current favorite with now less than 19 minutes to post. Let's go further to the inside for my second choice, Moon over Montgomery for Keith DeSormo. Now, this is a horse that has had some issues with the gate. He's been tough to load. He's uh, stumbled, bobbled at the break. And so that's one of the things that he has to overcome. But it, same idea. I think the longer distance with a slower pace, he'll be more forward, more involved with David Cohen in the saddle. Who knows this, Cole? I think that's a positive sign when you're dealing with a horse that either breaks slower, has trouble loading into the starting gate. David Cohen has been in the situation, in those situations that I'm referencing. And at odds of nine to one right now, we'll see if this level and this distance more than anything, because he dropped down to maiden 12-5, one of the lower levels at fairgrounds in his most recent start and put together his best result and best speed figure and all of the rest of it. He was beaten by a horse that was 36 to one in that race, Beer with Ice, the last race that we saw him just a few weeks back, actually, at fairgrounds. But this is a good situation for this type of a horse uh, here today if he can put together a good effort going into the gate and obviously coming out of the gate and getting around the nine furlongs and the number three horse Curlin's in charge five to two right now as the second choice he'll vie for favoritism for trainer and owner Steve Asmussen he goes to Irad Ortiz Jr. this is a gelding by Curlin out of a patio Prado first dam that he claimed for 15,000 two starts back had the one run up at Turfway Park uh, back at the beginning of March and he finished fifth that day even running style in those shorter races, longer distance today, got the pedigree to handle the longer distance, and we'll see how he handles the off track. He's never seen an off track like this as far as the afternoons are concerned in his racing, but he's one of those looking for his level, and perhaps the level is here today and the competition is here today for him to put together a better effort than what we've seen from him as of late, and perhaps the distance will be a big positive for him as well. And he's down on the inside, which is not a bad thing in my opinion. Uh, looking for that position going into the first turn. A mile and an eighth will be the distance for race number four. Once again, starts the late pick five here on this Wednesday at Keeneland. Good luck.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race, a maiden claiming event. Three-year-olds end up the claiming price of $20,000, a mile and an eighth over the main track listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering is start of the late pick five all on the main track today as we are off the turf. In this fourth race, scratch the one, money memo low. Scratch the five, cause a ruckus. Also scratch the nine, battleborn. And scratch 13, 14, and 15. Post time at eight minutes. Some observa observations with these runners for race number four, Photo Op. He's a big, tall gelding by Fast Anna out of the Corinthian first dam like a queen. He's built like a horse that might be able to appreciate the mile and an eighth distance. Strong gallop for him as he'll get on dirt for the first time. So he might be the tallest based on what these horses showed me down in the paddock, uh, getting them compared side by side. Uh, this is, a, I think, a positive for him from his long, leggy build going the mile and an eighth distance for what it's worth. He draws the inside post, post one with the scratch of the one that is photo op, six to one on the tote board right now. Moon over Montgomery, uh, this is a colt that he had the most energy and this may be what leads to him being a little fractious loading into the starting gate, getting anxious in the gate, whatever it may be. So something to keep an eye on with this colt, but it wasn't negative energy. He was just ready to go as he was getting ready to head out to the track as he's teamed up with the pony now for his warm up. Moon over Montgomery, 10 to 1 on the board right now. And then arguably the biggest horse from the size perspective is Akona, the number 11 horse. He's not the tallest, but he is just big. He is the son of Medallia Doro, Tap at First Dam, Godolphin Homebred, debuted for 15,000 at Turfway on the synthetic, tries the dirt here today. But I think you can get a perspective of the size of this uh, three year old colt here today. Um, he's an impressive individual. We'll see how he handles this longer distance um, running for 20,000 with James Graham in the saddle. Five minutes to post, race number four, $137,000 as of right now in that late pick five bull here at Keeneland.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race, start of the all-main track, late pick five. Moving into line for the fourth race. Stately Order goes in along with Moon over Montgomery. Akona moves into the gate. Quiet Rush. Top of the street, the last one going in. At the post. And they're off. There goes Moon over Montgomery along with Wahatchee. These two come right to the front with the top of the street. Joining them on the outside, Wahatchee determined to get the lead before they get down to the first turn. Clears the inside traffic. Wahatchee is in front by a length here early on. Top of the street moves up in second on the outside around Moon over Montgomery in third. Curlin's in charge, backs away, slides down to the inside to save some ground. In the fourth position, Quiet Rush moves up between horses in fifth. Photo Wop is sixth. Vino Fidanza is seventh on the outside. And then a gap of Seven more lengths back to the two trailers. Stately order just to the inside of Akona, who's last 23.44 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Wahatchee, the leader. Wahatchee leads the field by three quarters of a length up the back stretch. It's top of the street. It's right there in second. Then two more lengths to Moon over Montgomery. Third by a half length. Curlin's in charge has come to the outside. Moves up a closer fourth now. Then a gap of four more lengths back to Quiet Rush, who's in fifth. Photo op is sixth. Stately order is seventh. Akona is eighth. Vino Fidanza, last of the nine. 47.31 seconds the time for the first half mile. Top of the street has taken over, and Carlin's in charge has gone to second. Moon over Montgomery to third. Wahatchee drops back along the rail. Quiet Rush moves by that one now into fourth. Akona is fifth, and still seven lengths off the lead as they round the far turn and come toward the quarter pole. Top of the street is leading Carlin's in charge. A margin of two and a half lengths between them. Three lengths now off the turn. Top of the Street, the leader coming toward the eighth pole. Curlin's in charge is in second. Akona is toward the inside now in third. Stately Order has moved up a couple of spots into fourth. The battle is on behind top of the street, who's got a 16th to go, and they're starting to get to him. Here comes Curlin's in charge, and here comes a late run from Stately Order. Top of the street tries to hang on. Here's the wire. Top of the street hangs on, but by a diminishing neck. Well, he had built quite a bit an advantage with a quarter mile left in this race, but the mile and an eighth distance, it is such a test, and it turns out to be a stiff one for top of the street. The last 16th of a mile at the bare minimum started to get a bit hairy. As you can see, the number 10 horse closing to the outside, the three actually staying on after it looked like he was going to be, be backing down in this race, but the wire comes up just in time for top of the street. For Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr., a colt that is entered in that Keeneland April sale immediately following closing day here at Keeneland Racecourse for this spring meet.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fourth race. Number 12, Top of the Street, was first. Number 10, Stately Order, was second. Number 3, Carlin's in Charge, was third. The 11, Acona, was fourth. 12, 10, 3, 11, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's fourth race, number 12, Top of the Street. Owned by MJM Racing of Michael J. Mackin. Owned also by Brookdale Racing Incorporated of Nader Alali, Kenny McPeak Trains, and Brian Hernandez Jr. is the jockey. Top of the Street, three-year-old son of Street Boss out of Chatty's on top by Old Topper. Brandon Kentucky by Liberty Road Stables. Mile and an eighth over the sloppy main track, one minute 52.84 seconds. Fourth race results official. 12 10 3 11, the official results. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering. Start of the late pick four. All main track today. We are off the turf. Race number five, overweight. The six band from Midway. The jockey one pound over. Number six band from Midway will carry one pound of overweight. A reminder that race six is off the turf. It goes a mile on the main track. Race six off the turf, one mile on the main track. 
And a reminder, the eighth and final race off the turf, that one is a mile and a sixteenth main track. That's the eighth and final race off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track, currently listed sloppy.
Looking at the field for race five, 16 minutes out. This race does kick off the late pick four, pick three wagering also available in this event. Six furlongs on this sloppy main track. It's a starter allowance event. And I'm looking at the one Goshen as the top selection here for trainer Eric Foster. He comes out of a disappointing effort last time out at Turfway over their all weather surface. But I do think it was because of the level in which he was racing at last time out. It was a very tough two other than allowance race. Today, he seems to really fit these conditions a lot better. Obviously, he was in for the $10,000 tag back in August. Uh, he's been in for the $10,000. She's been in for the $10,000 tag several times, making her eligible for this starter allowance race. But she knows how to win. She's a five-time winner. She's also won on a wet track before. She's run really well on a wet track before, just generally speaking. So the uh, one Goshen is going to be the top pick for me. I do think it's key, though, that she hits the ground running here and tries to maintain that front running position position this afternoon. The three ghostly night is another filly to pay attention to. I should say five-year-old mare. She's a six-time winner and she's one for one here at Keeneland. The last time we saw her was on the 20th of October and she did win against open $16,000 claimers. She was actually claimed out of that event by her now trainer Matt Shire and he's protected her since then. She comes in off of a freshening and does attract the likes of Irad Ortiz Jr. <clears throat> and one thing you have to like about this horse is that she has plenty of experience on a wet track and she is a two-time winner on a wet surface as well. The eight Proto Magic is another horse to consider here. She has limited starts on a wet track, but she's actually run okay on uh, a, a, sur a surface with some moisture in it. And she comes out of a really strong effort last time out. Now, she was placed second via disqualification. She had a lot of trouble coming down the stretch last time out. I don't anticipate her being so far off of the pace. <clears throat> Sometimes she can sit that stalking trip and have success, but she really dominates against Starter Allowance Company throughout the winter at Turfway Park. The biggest question is, can she transition that form back to the main track? And her figure suggests that she can. I think she really fits this race quite well. And if you get five to one, that's a really nice price on a horse like this who has been in very good form throughout the winter. And then finally, the 10 Samarita. <clears throat> is another horse that the betting public is attracted to. She's right on the board at five to two. She's gonna show that speed from the outside post position and she very well could be fresh off of the layoff since the beginning of December. And I kind of think she needs to be. She needs to be able to clear the entire field and get that lead position. Now she has been able to rate and win before, but that was against easier competition. I think she really does do better when she is on the lead, especially when you consider uh, how strong this field is today. Uh, she did win on the lead two starts back at Keeneland in the fall, so I think that's going to be the key. That was only a six-horse field that she beat, though, when she was at Keeneland last. This is a very big field. It's a field of 10. There are no defections in this race, and she's really going to have to bring her A game. If she brings her A game, she's going to win. If she doesn't, she might fall a little bit short of that. So that's why I did not include her in the top three in my selections. I figured she'd go off at a shorter price. Three to one, I think, is fair, though, on this type of mare. It's a very, very competitive starter allowance race, and it does kick off that late pick four sequence. We are 13 minutes out from race five. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race. Starter allowance, fillies and mares, age four and up. Six furlongs over the main track, listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering start of the all-main track, late pick four. Overweight, the six band from Midway, the jockey one pound over. Post time coming up in just seven minutes. Start of the late pick four. And again, all races today at Keeneland on the main track. We are off the turf. Main track is sloppy.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, start of the late pick four. Moving into line, race five. Princess Tapature coming forward, along with Jen and Sen. Mazuku goes in. Samarita will be the last to load, moving forward now. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. Forever home bounds right out for the early lead. Samarita right there, Mazoku, and here comes Goshen to the inside. Goshen moves up into third position now. Jen and Sen goes fourth up on the outside. Mazoku is now fifth in between horses. Ghostly Knight finds an opening toward the rail, moves up two spots from the sixth position into fourth onto the far turn. Proto Magic is going to be four wide to the turn in seventh position. Storm Charging is eighth toward the inside and is joined there by Princess Tapature in ninth. Banned from midway, last of the 10, 22.79 seconds for the opening quarter. Back up front, Samarita moves up toward the outside and puts a head in front around the far turn. And fighting on is forever home to the inside. And these two have opened up by six lengths off the turn. Back to Proto Magic third, Goshen and fourth. Ghostly Knight is fifth toward the rail, still seven lengths off the lead. Samarita has taken the lead, coming toward the eighth pole. A scramble behind her. Goshen moves up in a second. Mazoku is in third. Ghostly Knight is still in tight, fourth toward the rail. Samarita has the lead, has it by four lengths into the final 16th. Mazoku then Ghostly Knight. Samarita still in front. Samarita, Emmanuel Giles aboard. Samarita to win it. Mazoku up for second. Ghostly Knight was third. Goshen was fourth.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race, number 10, Sam Arita, was first. Number four, Mazaku, was second. Number three, Ghostly Knight, third. Number one, Goshen, fourth. 10 4 3 1, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's fifth race, number 10, Samarita. Owned by Jay and N. Thoroughbreds, LLC of Jose Rodriguez. Trained by Jose Rodriguez, the jockey Emmanuel Giles. Samarita, five-year-old daughter of First Samurai out of Bay of Puck by Concord Point. Winner bred in Kentucky by Montecule. Six furlongs over the main track listed sloppy today, 1 minute 12.36 seconds. Race five, results official. 10 4 3 1, the official results. Keeneland sixth race upcoming. Race six comes off the turf. It'll go one mile on the main track. Again, race six off the turf, one mile main track. Race will finish in the short stretch of the first wire. The track is sloppy. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. In race six, scratch the two, Tiverton. Scratch three, Baratini. Also scratch the six, Exemplified. Scratch the eight, Passing Judgment. The nine, Mischievous Angel. The ten, Battle of Normandy. Also scratch the eleven, Alexis Zorba. The twelve, Porcarole. The thirteen, Karoom. And the fourteen, Ailman. A reminder, number 15, Gamer, draws into the race. The jockey will be Albin Jimenez. Again, 15, Gamer, draws into the race. The jockey, Albin Jimenez. Also, the 16, Dissolved, draws into the race. Jockey, as programmed, Irad Ortiz, Jr. And a reminder, the overweight, number one, overbore. The jockey, one pound over. Number one, overbore. The jockey, one pound over. For those playing the last pick three, the last rolling pick three of the day, a reminder, all main track. You've got race six on the main track at one mile. And remember that eighth race is on the main track at a mile and a sixteenth. Both of those races will finish in the short stretch.
Race six is up next. This race originally carded for the turf at one mile. will be run on the main track here. The distance of one mile. It's a first level allowance race. So plenty of scratches in here. But the four, Malibu Springs, is going to be the top selection for me at odds of seven to two. Now, this horse comes in off of uh, consecutive turf tries, finally did get the victory last time out. I'll be honest, I like this horse maybe a little bit better when it was originally carded for the turf, but some of his races on the dirt were actually quite good. If you go back to December of last year at Gulfstream Park, he almost broke his maiden on the main track, and that figure came up to be, uh, I wouldn't say quite equivalent to his turf figures, but it, just shy of those. So I do think that this is a horse that can handle multiple surfaces. He's never tried a wet main track before, but he's actually bred to handle a wet main track, being a son of Quality Road. So I did give the slight nod to the four at Malibu Springs as the top selection. As we go to the outside, the way, 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 way outside, the 16 dissolved right now at six to five. And I figured this horse was going to be a heavy favorite, not only because of his maiden score last time out, but also because of the good performance he put on at Keeneland in the fall of last year. He only lost by a length against really quality made in special weight company, and he posted an 80 buyer speed figure for that third place finish. Anything around that would probably win against this group, and I like the fact that he does have one race under the belt last time out. That was at Turfway, and he won despite it maybe not being his best distance as well. So he'll take that sprint effort and hopefully take another step forward stretching back out to a distance he prefers. And then finally, the number one overbore for trainer Kevin Fletcher. I think this is a horse you really have to consider, especially at the odds of six to one. The only problem with him is that he doesn't really show much speed. And in these smaller compact fields, it's harder for horses like this to overcome that because the field kind of comes together and horses like this who don't really have a lot of speed, they really have to work hard to keep up with, with the rest of that pack. And the pace doesn't really come back to horses like this. But all that said, I do like him coming back to the main track. He's had a couple of tries going against first level allowance company at Ellis. That was back in the summer of last year. Those came up to be very, very tough races. So in some ways, this is a class relief. Several of these horses are facing winners for the first time. He's been facing winners for quite some time. It's been a while since he broke his maiden, but he really has been going against a good group of horses. And I think he's benefited from this race coming off the turf. And maybe he can finally pass through the first level allowance because of all of the scratches and by virtue of the fact that many of these horses are we're hoping to get to the turf and our turf horses maybe he can get that second career win and that's a look at some of the competitors here coming up in the sixth race they're going to get their tack on and head out to the track side we'll get a closer look at them momentarily and come with a track side report we are 17 minutes out from the six good luck
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race. The Oak Hill Farm, an allowance for four-year-olds and up that comes off the turf, goes one mile on the sloppy main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the two, Tiverton. Scratch three, Baratini. Scratch the six, Exemplified. Scratch eight, Passing Judgment. Nine, Mischievous Angel. Ten, Battle of Normandy. Also scratch 11, Alexis Sorba, 12, Porcarole, 13, Karoom, and 14, Ailman. A reminder, 15, Gamer draws in, but the jockey is Albin Jimenez. 15, Will Run, the jockey, Albin Jimenez. The 16, Dissolved, also draws in. As programmed, it'll be Irad Ortiz Jr. And the Overweight, the one, Overbore, the jockey, one pound over. This starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes, also starts another rolling double, all main track today at Keeneland, post time in six minutes. Taking a closer look at some of these horses on the track, and we'll start off with the number five coaches meeting. I just wanted to point out this horse out because he is ready and raring to go. This is a horse that is very much on his toes. You can see just the high energy that he has. Rayla Gutierrez trying to do a good job of getting this horse to settle down, but he is definitely a horse that's keyed up and ready to roll. And I point this out because sometimes in these off the turf events, it's really hard to figure out pace scenarios. I have a really tough time with it as is just looking off the past performances so sometimes you want to look at those physical cues that the horses are giving you and I would be surprised if this five horse is far off the pace today when he went two turns on the turf he showed speed it wasn't a really fast pace but just judging by his demeanor today you can see Ray Lou Gutierrez kind of kicking his feet out the irons trying to get this horse to settle um, but yeah I, I think that this is a horse that's very fresh coming into today and he's likely going to show speed. The stamina is the biggest question for this 10 to 1 shot. One horse that I thought looked really well on the track today is the 7 Carcano for trainer Vicki Oliver. And this horse does get a big class relief. Uh, last time out, he did st face Stakes Company. I just thought he had a lot of class about him. And when you're looking at these off-the-turf races, too, you want to look at horses that look like dirt horses as opposed to turf horses. I would say the four definitely looks like a turf horse. The seven, Carcano, looks like a horse that could relish the main track. And he has. I mean, he's mostly, or in his um, seven career starts, he's only competed on the surface. So he's a horse that I think is benefited by this race coming off the turf. And I just thought he had really positive energy on the track, especially considering he's coming in off of a layoff. He holds condition to him, but he, I wouldn't say, or I would say that he does look fit coming in off the layoff. Joel Rosario aboard this 5-2 to two shot. But it's a very interesting race. Despite all of that, we have 3-2 to two odds on the outside runner. That's the 16 as we are 14 minutes out from the 6. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, the Oak Hill Farm at one mile on the main track. And it starts at all main track pick three. Moving into line, race six. Overboard goes into the gate. Malibu Springs, now coaches meeting. Carcano coming forward, and then two more to load. Gamer. And dissolved the last one. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off, an awkward beginning for Overbore. In the meantime, there goes Dissolved from the outside. In fact, the other five going to line up, headed down to the first turn as things begin to sort themselves out now with Malibu Springs moving up the rail to take the lead. So Dissolved will go second on the outside to stop the leader's flank around the first turn. Coach's meeting is tucked away to the inside in third position. Carcano saving some ground against the rail in fourth. Gamer goes fifth up on the outside of that one. Overbore has now caught up with the field, but is last for the move off the first turn and up the back stretch. the opening quarter. 23.65 seconds. Here's Dissolved alongside of Malibu Springs. Now these two are matching strides, contesting the lead, midpoint of the back stretch, and here's Coach's meeting between that pair in third. Another length then back to Carcano in fourth. Gamer far outside is in fifth. And Overbore, last of the six, is still running nearly six lengths from the front as they head for the turn. 47.74 seconds, the time for the first half mile. It is Malibu Springs who shows the way. Malibu Springs on top by just a half length. Dissolved is second. Gap of three and a half more lengths to Carcano, who's third a half length. Just to the outside of Coach's meeting, who's losing some ground. Overbore moves up one spot, but still a distant fourth, a quarter mile to go. And then further back, Gamer is last as they come off the far turn. Malibu Springs opening up on Dissolved. Malibu Springs has the lead. Top of the short stretch opens up by three and a half, four, five lengths clear. Dissolved is in second into the final furlong. And then a gap of nearly five more back to Carcano toward the inside and third. It is Malibu Springs, Vince Chaminade aboard. Malibu Springs will cruise on home to take it. Malibu Springs the winner, and then it was dissolved across the wire in second, followed by Carcano in third, and Overbore was fourth. Malibu Springs showing great speed out of the starting gate today and you can just see this long loping stride with the son of quality road. He definitely handled the surface this afternoon getting bat to dirt but actually the first time on a wet main track he takes the field gate to wire at a very nice price at five to one four sixteen seven one unofficially across the finish line.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's sixth race, number four, Malibu Springs, was first. Number 16, Dissolved, was second. Number seven, Carcano, was third. Number one, Overboard, was fourth. Four, 16, seven, one, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's sixth race, the Oak Hill Farm, number four, Malibu Springs, owned by Marianne Stribling, trained by Kent Sweezy, Vent Chaminade, the jockey. Malibu Springs, a four-year-old gelded son of Quality Road out of Marquee Miss by Cowboy Cal, bred in Kentucky by Windstar Farm, LLC. One minute, 38.16 seconds over the sloppy main track for the one mile. Keeneland April Horses of Racing Age Sale graduate Malibu Springs in race six. In the winner's circle, the Oak Hill Farm trophy presentation to the connections of Malibu Springs. Race six results official. Four sixteen seven one. The official results. Keeneland sixth race. Keeneland seventh race upcoming starts the last of the day's rolling doubles. Race seven will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch number one San Siro. Scratch the six more Vino. And scratch the seven, Facenda. Again, scratch one, San Siro. Scratch the six, Morvino. And scratch seven, Facenda. Track is listed sloppy. A reminder, race eight comes off the turf. It, too, will go at a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. All main track, late double track is sloppy.
The rain continues to come down here at Keeneland Racecourse as we are sloppy on our main track. But this is a really nice first level allowance coming up next for those straight three-year-olds. The distance will be a mile and a sixteenth over that sloppy sealed surface. And we start the conversation off with a horse that's five to two. It's a three heartened tier for trainer Todd Pletcher. He started his career off at uh, be the Belmont at Aqueduct meet back in September of last year. Finished a good closing third in that event. And ultimately... The camp decided to make the surface change to the turf. He ran pretty well in those events, but wound up breaking his maiden at Tampa Bay Downs uh, in, in a dirt event going a mile and 40 yards. Now, <clears throat> I do think he took advantage of somewhat of a small field that day and also a slow pace, but I also don't think that he, I know he broke his maiden in that event, but I don't know that he particularly loved the surface. I actually went back and I watched that replay and I liked it so much that I ultimately uh, picked him in the Tampa Bay Derby. That didn't really work out for me, but there are a lot of things that were going on with the Tampa Bay Derby. Obviously there was a tote delay and that delayed the running of the race. Many of these horses or all of the runners in the Tampa Bay Derby had to wait for a very long time in the paddock. It was a very hot day. So I just don't think you can... I think you can give him the benefit of the doubt for that last race in the Tampa Bay Derby. And I also think it was a very slow pace and he just couldn't make up that ground that he lost. But it was a decent effort overall and he's going to be the pick for me. I don't think he's going to be too far off of the pace. I think he can maybe sit a stalking or mid-pack trip under Flavian Pratt. The number two horse, Native Land, I don't know what to expect from this horse because he really came well from off the pace last time out, going the mile and an eighth. You can see in the short comment, sudden burst, five wide, and that was exactly what the situation was. This horse just came out of absolutely nowhere. At one point, he was about 10 lengths off of the pace and really closed rapidly in order to win. We don't always see that type of kick on the main track, especially going the distance of a mile and an eighth, so it was very visually impressive. I hope that he can find himself a little closer to the pace. He was two starts back on that sloppy seal track at Oaklawn, but with this compact field, I think it's going to be important for him to find a decent position or at least get going early rather than later like he did last time out. He picks up Junior Alvarado with the call. The number five, Rocketeer is a horse that definitely merits respect. He won first time out last fall as a two-year-old. Now he makes his three-year-old seasonal debut. He has a lovely pedigree. He's a son of Curlin. He's out of an Indian Charlie mare. I love that line. Blinker's coming off today after being equipped with them first time out. He also gets the addition of Lasix today, and he really did absolutely nothing wrong in his debut. He showed really good gate speed. He wasn't too keen. He rated nicely, and then he just dominated against that group of 10 others in that field. He also drew kind of towards the inside, so that speed really came into play for him in his debut. He's really nice. I guess the question is, what price are you willing to take on him? And do you think he's ready to roll off of that layoff? For what it's worth, Brad Cox with two-turn dirt horses coming off of these types of extended layoffs. He wins. So once again, these horses merit a lot of respect, including the five Rocketeer, the son of Curlin, who should absolutely love this wet track here this afternoon. Curious to get a closer look at some of these horses, especially the five Rocketeer as they go postward. They're going to be heading trackside in just a minute. We're 15 minutes out from the seventh.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's seventh race, the Hermitage Farm, an allowance optional claiming race for a price of $100,000, a mile and a sixteenth over the main track listed sloppy. Scratch the one San Siro, also scratch the six Morvino, and scratch the seven Facenda. Race will finish in the short stretch of the first wire. Starts the last of the day is rolling doubles. A reminder, race eight comes off the turf, and it too will go a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Post time at six minutes. We're going to look at two very different horses on the track today. The five Rocketeer is one of them. You can see him just very docile on the track, not phased by anything. Definitely seems like an old soul on the track. You would think that he had many starts and just one on his form. But I really like his demeanor and just kind of how he walks. He throws his front legs just in front of him, kind of like a marching soldier. And you can see why. Uh, you know, the connections even liked him first time out and how he won first time out. He's just a very athletic looking horse, very rounded out in his hind quarters. Um, you know, he does have to get the mile in a 16th today. Uh, he's definitely a compact type of horse, but he clearly was able to get a distance of or a sprint distance in his debut. So we'll see if he can get the two turns off of this lengthy layoff today. But physically, he looks very fit. He looks like a horse that could definitely get himself ready in the morning and also also looks like a very classy individual. The three heartened on the other side of the spectrum. He's a very long, lanky type of horse here, the son of Street Boss. He's got a lot of size and scope to him. He was also very antsy on the way out to the track, where the five was very calm and collected. The three, definitely a horse that is on his toes. Now, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I do hope he settles as we get closer to post time, because you don't want them to use all that energy prior to getting into the starting gate. But it does look like Flavian Pratt has gotten him to at least settle down, uh, you know, aside. Uh, right next to the pony right now. Um, but just given his demeanor, I wouldn't be surprised if this horse shows some gait speed today. He just seems like he's coming into this race really amped up. So maybe a horse that could be setting the tempo early. It's a great group of horses here. I'm very curious to see the number five Rocketeer come back off of the shelf. And the two native land also looked the picture out on the track for trainer Riley Mott. We'll see how it all plays out. A very competitive allowance race for these three-year-olds. We're getting close to post time. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's seventh race, the Hermitage Farm. Moving into line, race seven. Native land going in. Heartened. Now Kitty Hawk. Three more to load. Rocketeer comes forward. Now ever do it, and that will leave Gambler's Tail. Last one. Goes in. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk right out for the lead. Rocketeer comes away running in second. There's Gambler's Tail on the far outside. Nady Bland back toward the inside. Ever do it. Heartened at the back as they head down into the first turn. Kitty Hawk is the leader. Gets over to the rail. Leads Rocketeer by three quarters of a length. Nady Bland tucked away third toward the inside. Travels against the rail right behind the early leader as they head onto the back stretch. And then Gambler's Tail, who was caught wide around the first turn, three lanes off the rail. In a tussle near the back of the pack here early on with Ever Do It, who moves up from between horses, takes over fourth. Gambler's Tail fifth. Heartened is sixth against the rail, now moves up one position from there. 23.67 seconds. That was the time for the opening quarter. Kitty Hawk, midpoint of the backstretch, leads at a length. Rocketeer goes second, three quarters of a length. Native Land is third. Then a gap of three more lengths back to Heartened, who continues moving up the inside, now into fourth. As they go to the turn, Ever Do It is fifth and Gambler's Tail last of the six, 47.02 seconds, the time for the first half mile. Kitty Hawk and Rocketeer still 1-2 with Native Land and then Heartened. Now Heartened has swung to the outside, changed lanes, moved off the rail, and moves up on the far outside, fourth into third, a length off the front pair as they come to the quarter pull. Rocketeer puts ahead in front. Heartened is right there on the outside. Kitty Hawk is now third, still there toward the inside. Native Land has to swing wide, top of the short stretch. Rocketeer and Heartened, Heartened, and Rocketeer. Heartened moves up for the lead. Native Land, though, is running on from the outside, and Rocketeer is still fighting on down to the inside. Heartened between horses, and Native Land, and Rocketeer still there against the rail. These three coming to the wire. Native Land trying to get a narrow lead. Native Land wins it by a neck for Junior Alvarado. Heartened was second, Rocketeer third, and Gambler's Tail was fourth. Well, he was covered in mud from tip to tail, but that didn't seem to phase him whatsoever. The number two native land, once he kind of angled out to about the three or four path, still on the wrong lead at this point, he just keeps on coming with this closing kick. It's kind of what he did last time out, and he fires back again here today for trainer Riley Mott. The three, Harton ran a good race, made an early move on the backside, just couldn't quite sustain it. And the number two native land, gets up in the shadow of the wire.
the unofficial results of Keeneland's seventh race. Number two, Native Land, was first. Number three, Hartened, was second. Number five, Rocketeer, third. Number nine, Gambler's Tale, fourth. Two, three, five, nine, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's seventh race, the Hermitage Farm, number two, Native Land, owned by Cheyenne Stables, LLC, of Everett Dobson, trained by Riley Mott, the jockey, Junior Alvarado. Native Land, a three-year-old son of mastery, out of Janice's Joy, by Broken Val, bred in Kentucky, by Frankfurt Park Farm. A Keeneland November baby, Native Land, gets a mile and a sixteenth over the sloppy main track in one minute, 44.01 seconds. Race 7, results official. 2359, the official results. In the winter circle, the Hermitage Farm trophy presentation to the connections of native land. Keeneland's eighth and final race upcoming. Comes off the turf, goes a mile and a sixteenth on the sloppy main track. No Superfecta and no Super High Five on this final event. Scratch the one, Reckoning Force. Scratch the two, Greek Order. Scratch three, Deer District. Scratch the four, February Sun. Also scratch the five, Leave It to Kitten. Scratch the ten, Noise is Off. Scratch the eleven, American Diamond. Also scratch the twelve, Balloony. The thirteen, Bloodline. And scratch the 15 Brumba Waffle Toes and the 16 High Tide. A reminder, number 14 draws into the race. 14, he's got this. Draws into the race. Corey Lannery to ride as programmed. Eighth and final race. Mile and a 16th on the main track.
Horse is getting saddled for the eighth and final race today at Keeneland Racecourse. And I can't say that I'm really surprised that this horse is opening up as the two to five favorite. The seven pipeline, just given his class and some of the horses that he's competed against throughout his career, even going back to the grade one Forgo, he managed to finish third in a seven horse field behind Cody's Wish and Jackie's Warrior, some of the top sprinters in the division, especially of that year back in 20. 22. Obviously, we went to see, we uh, witnessed what Cody's wish could do beyond that, outside of that. Now, obviously, this horse probably isn't as good as that type of performance. It looked like he kind of went all in on that uh, event in the grade one forego, posting a 105 buyer speed figure. He came back in the Breeders' Cup dirt mile, did not show up. Even an allowance race didn't show up. So, you know, I do think that he probably gave it his all in that event. He's probably never going to be able to get back to that number, but he doesn't need to get back to that number in order to beat this field today. With it coming off the turf, he's really benefited with being one of the few legitimate dirt horses in this event. So it's a tremendous class relief. And even if you look back on his last dirt race and think, okay, that really wasn't a good performance. He finished ninth in the grade two cigar mile. Well, it was an insanely fast pace and he was involved in that insanely fast pace as well. Uh, also in the field, obviously, Senor Buscador, who won the Saudi Cup. So that was a very, very strong race. I like him coming back to the main track today, as do many other people at two to five. Let's take a look at some others in this field, including the number nine horse, not normal, first time for Connor Murphy. This horse has had moments where his form would definitely be competitive against this field, right now on the board at five to one. Comes out of a second place finish last time out. I actually thought one of his most impressive performances was two starts back when he almost beat three other than Allowance Company at Parks. That was also over a muddy sealed track. I guess the question really is, uh, what is what distance is he most effective at? And maybe it might be a little bit shorter than this particular distance, but I still think some of his dirt races are intriguing enough to use in the mix, and clearly he's handled a wet track before in the past. And then finally, the number six horse, Lincoln Highway. He really hasn't had much experience with the main track, but he is a son of Quality Road, and he is out of an Empire Maker mare. So when you look at that pedigree, it's, there's definitely reason to believe that this horse will take a liking to the sloppy track. You never know until they try it. Obviously, this horse is more accomplished on the turf. He won an allowance race at Keeneland in the fall of last year, closing from off of it to win that allowance event. So it always is a question, but I'm, you know, I, I think he's a legitimate five to one shot. He clearly has some class and he is going to be closing late if that pace does come back to him. But I really think a lot of eyeballs will be on the number seven pipeline. He is simply the horse to beat. We'll see if he can get the job done at one to two in the nightcap.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth and final race, the Sierra Farm, an allowance for four-year-olds at up. Comes off the turf, goes a mile and a 16th on the main track, which is sloppy. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. No superfecta, no super high five. A reminder, scratch the one reckoning force, the two Greek order, the three deer district, the four February sun, and the five leave it to kitten. Also scratch the 10 noises off, the 11 American Diamond, the 12 Balloonie, and the 13 Bloodline. And scratch 15 Brumba Waffle Toes and 16 High Tide. A reminder, number 14, he's got this, draws into the race. Corey Lannery, as programmed, is the jockey. Mile and a 16th, main track, six minutes to post.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth and final race, the Sierra Farm, at a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Moving into line, race eight. Lincoln Highway goes in. Pipeline comes forward. Woodcock Flight moves into line. Not Normal comes next. And he's got this, will be the last to load. Last one comes forward. Mile of the 16th, main track. First wire. All in line at the post. And they're off. There goes Not Normal out for the lead, and Pipeline is right there, and Pipeline moves up, gets over toward the rail, and has the early advantage here. Not Normal will go second as they move for the first turn. Woodcock Flight is in third. Lincoln Highway is fourth, and he's got this. Will be last of the five here early on. Pipeline is the leader. Pipeline against the rail around the turn leads it by just a length. Not Normal goes second by two and a half lengths and is followed by Woodcock Flight, who is now three lengths back as they head on to the back stretch. Then a gap of another six lengths back to Lincoln Highway next to last. He's got this is the trailer opening quarter 24.42 seconds over the sloppy going and pipeline shows the way. Pipeline up the back stretch leads it by a length and a half, almost two lengths now. It's not normal. Is traveling in second. Then a gap of four more lengths back to Woodcock Flight. Five back of that one. Lincoln Highway, two back of that one. He's got this trails as they move for the far turn after an opening half mile and 48 point oh nine seconds it is still pipeline the leader the marginal length and a half not normal stalking the pace from second then a gap of seven more lengths now eight more lengths back to woodcock flight who is losing contact with the top two and the other pair have running to do that's lincoln highway and he's got this they both move down toward the inside now third and fourth respectively but the leader is already past the quarter pole and coming to the top of the short stretch and that's pipeline pipeline has a five length lead not normal is second by a seven length margin off the far turn the other three go at it for third at this point final furlong pipeline maintains the advantage has it by five lengths into the final furlong past the 16th pole and it will be pipeline to win the nightcap pipeline jose ortiz aboard to win it then it was not normal in second followed by woodcock flight who came back for third from lincoln highway and he's got this who was fifth A win was never in doubt every single step of the way. Pipeline showing good gate speed today, finding himself in a forward position. I will say the number nine, not normal, really, really fought hard. He had a bad job to do chasing this horse around the racetrack, but he fought valiantly to maintain second there. It's going to be Pipeline, the winner of today's finale at three to five. The nine, not normal in second and the eight, Woodcock Flight, rounding out the trifecta unofficially for the eighth and final race.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's eighth race, number seven, Pipeline, was first. Number nine, Not Normal, was second. Number eight, Woodcock Flight, third. Number six, Lincoln Highway, fourth. Seven, nine, eight, six, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's eighth race, the Sierra Farm, number seven pipeline, owned by John Gunther and EuroWest Bloodstock Services of Tanya Gunther, trained by Cherie DeVoe. Jose Ortiz is the winning jockey. Pipeline, a six-year-old son of Spitestown out of Vivo Perlet by Empire Maker Bred in Kentucky by EuroWest Bloodstock Services Limited. Mile at a 16th on the main track, one minute, 44.14 seconds. Race 8 results official and the trophy presentation for the Sierra Farm in the winter circle to the connections of Pipeline. Pick six pays on six of six with a consolation five of six. The late pick five, five of five, consolation four of five. The second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, will remain open for simulcasting for another 30 minutes. You may advance wager any races occurring after that time. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.